Mr. Pop. <laughs> Dark. When the little birds are nasty, and I listen to them too, there's two lonesome people in the whole wide world. That's me and the man in the moon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Miss Kanata Gator Racy Radio, the podcast exploring fantasy play games as Arkham Horror the Card Game. I'm Dane. I'm Dan. I'm Ben. And today, we're going to be checking out the player cards from the Lair of Dagon. The new Lair. The, the new uh, Mythos pack. The crib of the fish daddy himself. What do, what do you guys think the Lair of Dagon <laughs> smells like? Probably not very great. I mean, it's it's bad. Like, it's mm. like fish, <laughs> I think it's extremely bad. Yeah. Other, yeah. Real gross fish. I'm sure uh, MJ will give us a visceral description uh, when we go into there. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like after you like leave the beach and you haven't like taken a shower yet, so like you have all that like salt water all like just like drying out your skin, but you're like sticky. That's probably how it is all the time there. I'm thinking a mixture of sort of like a like a sushi delivery truck that like went off road and crashed somewhere and then just sat there for a couple of weeks <laughs> mixed with like kind of like zoo animal smell, but specifically for like large fish and like large aquatic animals. I think it'd be very, very bad is what I'm getting at. Uh, well, but luckily great. this is not like a scratch and sniff game or anything. The cards don't smell like that. <laughs> so it's not going to be a problem. Don't give MJ any ideas. Yeah. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, <laughs> we should we should start we should start talking about these cards. We'll talk about uh, these cards. We've got All eleven right. today, right? No, so no, here's there's thirteen, but <laughs> so so here's the first card. We've got a guardian event called Enchant Weapon. Uh, it costs three. It is level three. It has two willpower icons and a combat icon. It's a spell and an upgrade. And it says attached to a weapon asset controlled by an investigator at your location. Limit one per asset. Attached asset gains the relic trait and takes up an arcane slot in addition to its other slots. When you perform a fight action using attached asset, exhaust this card. Add the owner of this card's willpower to your combat for this attack. This attack deals plus one damage. Uh, and that's that's a that's a uh, reaction ability, by the way. Interesting. Hmm. I like it better than holy ammo ammunition or whatever it is. So, I mean, what what I'm getting out of this is you can pick any weapon and you can make it a magical weapon. So you can yeah. pick the tiny the tiny gun. Now it's a magical tiny gun. You can pick like <laughs> the illegal Tommy gun. Now it's a magic illegal Tommy gun. You can pick like a like a right, knife. Bro. Now it's a magic knife. Right? Don't don't put this on your cold vest pockets. Don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't do that. Um, well, you could if you also <laughs> put the other. Uh, what's the one that lets you pull the upgrades back if you really want to? No. So, so I mean, um, this this Lion ends the relic trait, which is useful. Uh, is by itself. Uh, is, that, is there anything that combos with that? Other cards, I guess Ursula, maybe if she has. Stuff I, mean, the, 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 I, I guess uh, like, I guess like white and green. I think maybe or something like they're. You know, that's like tomes and stuff. Maybe no, not relics. Tomes. Yeah. It'd have to be, no, because e Eli Horowitz is the one who pulls relics from your deck, but you should, this isn't a relic itself. Yeah, th there's a lot of things that like make it easier to play a relic or to search for one, but that this is something you'd make something a relic once you've already played it. So I don't think that this really helps with those. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple investigators who can play this that are kind of like weird ones, like Marie, and I think Parallel Agnes can play this. Question marks? Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what the deck building of the parallel I think, are. I think they can both play spells, like 0 to 5 or something like that, um, just in general. Yeah. Uh, Marie, right? Whether or not that's actually good or not is, like, questionable, but, um, yeah. I, I think uh, one thing that threw me for a loop initially was that it says add the owner of this card's willpower to your combat right. for this attack. Hmm. But that's because... Oh. So so that means that if I, if, I'm, if I play this on one of Ben's weapons my willpower gets added to Ben's attacks, right? Yes. Okay. So, like, so if you're a mystic and you play this, or Zoe or someone with good willpower, it's a huge boost to the attack. Yeah. It's interesting, too, that it my willpower goes up or down later. It, it That still counts, right? Like, if I if I play it when my will is five, and then I get some kind of weakness or something that makes it a two, suddenly your weapon is less magical. Yep. And actually, if you use like talents to boost your own willpower during somebody else's the skill test <laughs> where they're attacking, then I guess it would boost it, right? Because that is really funny. Is Meltaroni a weapon? But you would not be able. To, you, 
you still wouldn't be able to commit a will card. Right. And if you committed a will, if you committed a card that had will and combat icons like this one, you would not get the willpower bonus because it's not your willpower that matters. It's the person who played this card. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, what? <laughs> okay. But like ignoring all of that, this is a thing that gives plus one damage to a weapon, which once per seems... turn. Oh, is it once once per turn? No, it is. Well, you have to, you have to exhaust it. Exhaust it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's still it's still cool. I, I, to me, the main thing that's going to determine whether I would think about taking this is, do I have a weapon that either doesn't use ammunition or that I'm planning on reloading a lot instead of just yeah. like, trashing it and replacing it? Because if I'm putting a weapon down, using it three times, and then over and playing something else over it, I probably don't like this as much. Yeah, I mean, even somebody like Tommy, who has like three, would be fine taking this, right? Like, because he's got uh, Becky, which is kind of like his, his yeah. signature thing. If you're going for like a bunch, like a few big guns or something like that, you could totally do like an upgrade build with this, because this is actually pretty reasonable. Yeah, I mean, even if you're doing, um, oh, I forgot the name, the five the five XP neutral weapon, uh, sword, if you just build that, or Silas is Time Warp Brand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brand. Even, even Machete, a, like, we like don't, we don't see people. Build or something. Yeah, we don't see people play machete too much anymore. But I mean, this would be pretty good on a machete. What was that blood for the blood god weapon? That's like one experience and like puts weaknesses well, in your deck. I, I know what you mean. The bloodthirsty blade or something. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you could even use that with this. It's not not terrible. Also, yeah. galvanize can get this back up if you want to use it more than once in a turn. Mm-hmm. That being yeah. said, then you then you have galvanize in your deck. I mean, like even if it's just once per turn, that's still like a vicious blow every turn on your weapon, yeah. right? Yeah, basically. That's that's the bottom line is I, I don't really care about the I don't I don't really care about the relic trait. I don't really care about the arcane thing because you're probably if you're fighting with weapons, usually you don't care that much about arcane slots. Uh and I don't really even care that much about adding willpower to something because it's it's it would be nice, but you know, you you can usually pass combat tests if you're a fighter. But uh just getting plus one damage once per turn is not nothing. Like that's the kind of thing that yeah. you do want. And the, the relic part is nice because there are sometimes enemies that are like, oh, it, if you if it's a relic, it does more damage, or if it's not a relic, it does less damage, or whatever. That so, is true, yeah. Or like if you attack it with a non-relic, the weapon explodes and you can't use it anymore. It goes in your discard <laughs> pile. So yeah, yeah I, I I think like if I was playing a deck where I was going to be using weapons that were not disposable, I would probably play this as a one of eventually just to try it out, and it might be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody who cycles their deck a lot too would probably want this more, right? Because then they could find it. Because you kind of want to want this as a one. I guess you could, you could put two of these. No, limo one for asset. Okay. Well. Yeah, but you could put it if you're playing multi, you know, three, four player group. You could put one on your weapon, and then you could have another one to play on somebody else's weapon. That's true. You you could also have like two machetes or two switchblades yeah. or whatever, and have both be magical. So. Yeah. And then and then you'd be more than magical the sword extra game. damage more often. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. Do we think it's worth like three XP cost three? Eventually, once you've upgraded your B cops and once you've got upgraded vicious blows and a bunch of other things, sure. Yeah. I mean, like the, the bottom line is that the thing that you really want, if you're playing like a, a primary fighter in like a three or four player group, you want to be able to like kill any combination of enemies that can come out in a turn before they get in the way. Right. And so you really, that's why like B cop is such an amazing card. That's why vicious blow is so great. Anything that lets you do extra damage pretty freely is really, really good. Right. So that's why, even though this is kind of expensive, even though it's three XP, even though it, it it's only really good with certain weapons. But for those weapons, I would really, I would really try to make this work. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, like I like gonna, it. I'm going to put this in wherever my next Zoe deck is. That uh, uses a giant. <laughs> well, that's a gift. That's coming. That's coming <laughs> I don't know. This, I mean, holy, holy religious magic usually isn't kind of greenish, right? Yeah, it's right. usually it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have. It's not blessed. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, it isn't blessed. For might, some reason, might. I I was thinking that. Okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. It might still, still, um, still get in there. It's good. But let's uh, let's let's move on to the next card, though. The next card is a guardian ally asset. Uh, her name is Nephthys, Huntress of Bast. Uh, she costs three resources to play. She is a level four. Uh, she commits for one will and two combat icons. She's an ally and she's blessed, which means Mateo can play her. Uh, you get plus one willpower, and then triggered ability uh, when one or more blessed tokens would be removed from the chaos bag during skill test. Seal them on Nephthys instead, and then as a uh, free action.exe uh, exhaust Nephthys, 
either release three blessed tokens sealed on her or return three blessed tokens sealed on her to the token pool to deal two damage to any enemy at your location. Yeah, I got bad news, uh, Dane. And Tragically, he... Mateo can only use up to level three bless cards. Oh! So he cannot use this. Just, just, just to finish things off, the bottom of the card. Oh. oh, yes, I'm sorry. Two health, two sanity, and takes up the ally slot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Before we talk about this, so the, the 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 triggered action, the comma placement is is interesting. So it's either you release three blessed tokens sealed on her or return three blessed tokens sealed to the token pool to deal two damage. So you only do the damage if you return the three to the token pool. If you just release them back into the bag, then you do not get to deal the two damage, right? Yes. Because it, it's sort of ambiguous, but I, I think that's probably correct. I don't know. I, I guess when I initially read it, I thought it was one or the other. Uh, but I guess it makes sense that it would be returning. Because I'm, I'm reading it as like everything before the combo is one thing you can do. And then everything after the comma, sorry, before and after the comma, everything after the comma is another thing you can do. Like, I don't think that the to deal two damage to an enemy or location applies to both sides of the comma. But I, right. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but that would be my interpretation. If if you want to put more back in the bag, you can release them. Yeah. Nothing else happens, or you can return three uh, to the token pool, gone from the bag completely to deal two damage or something, which is cool. It's a it's a good ability. So even even without talking about how good that ability is, if you're playing somebody who can play level four blue cards and will is your primary stat then this is sort of worth looking at solely for that, even without looking at the blessed token thing, right? Um, the problem is I'm not sure if there's really anybody in that category, apart from maybe Sister Mary. Yeah, Sister Mary. Um, like, who who yeah, else can play it who actually... I mean, you know, having extra will in, like, any Guardian is not bad. Right, right. But who is, like, actually going to be using that every turn? There's... I mean, if you've got the enchanted weapon, <laughs> then you're going to be using it. But, but, well, but uh... the... yeah, I guess if you're if you're playing it on yourself, yeah. You know what um... is confusing about this card? Like when you're, if you're, I I assume it's supposed to work like when you would do a test and you draw blessed tokens, blessed tokens would go back in the bag or would go back into the. Um, the pool, but they're not in the bag at that time, right? So that's just a weird wording. No, that's definitely how it works, right? That's so it's people, yeah. people, in the, people in the chat are mentioning it's kind of like a sacred covenant. Like it's a way to, if you draw blessed tokens and you don't need them, um, well, or even if you do need them, instead of losing them, they go onto her, and then right. you can either you can either just put them back and exhaust her once you get like three, or you can spend them to deal some damage. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, she kind of like recycles them in that in that kind of way, which is cool. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about like how is this like, is this like a real machine where like you're just gonna always be able to like do two damage with her every turn because that would be really good, it's or is it Mary. more like if people are playing a ton of blast tokens, people are drawing a lot of blast tokens, and you're just like you pretty much like always have three on her, then that would be very very strong. I'm wondering like how much blessed stuff you need in, in your group to, for that to happen. I mean, Mary, you can definitely, <clears throat> there's definitely enough cards now that you can generate blessed pretty quick, especially, especially if you also have a survivor around because a lot of the survivor cards are really good at um, cranking in more blessed tokens too. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, I still don't want to play like that terrible survivor neck that makes blessed tokens or like the, the <laughs> terrible survivor event that just makes blessed tokens. Like I, uh, I want to get them, I want to get them for free and be able to use this. Can I do that? With Sister Mary, uh, yeah. Sister Mary, you can. I think other stuff you got to do. Also, there's something. also a card that's coming out that I'm not going to talk about right now. And I just realized that's in the next pack, so I'm not going to stop talking. Great. Okay. <laughs> keep, keep us informed. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like someone mentioned this uh, in chat that, like, you're not dealing with fighting an enemy every turn, and there's a good chance you can just load this up with, like, a lot of blessed tokens so that when you need to fire them off, you might have, like, six or nine on it already. Uh, yeah. And then just yeah. It is... keep getting them on it, it... again. It is true, although keep in mind you can only you have to exhaust her to actually do it, right? right? right so you can't. 
The important part, though, is that her first ability, you do not exhaust her, which would be would have made her much worse, right? Because yeah, she'd, she'd if, be pretty bad that way. If yeah. you have to, like, choose basically the first test that you do or try in Sacred Covenant and then, like, you know, get as many blessed tokens from one test a turn or around on her, that would be way worse. She'd be much slower and she wouldn't nearly be as worth it. But any time a blessed token comes out, you can just pick it up on her, which is which is much, 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 much better. Yeah. Yeah. This is like, it's it's not too expensive. It is kind of a lot of XP, but, you know, whatever. Maybe you eventually get to the point where you have plenty if you're playing a campaign where you get a lot. And, uh, I mean, it's it's a pretty good payoff if you have a lot of blessed tokens. And the, the will's not bad either, so. Yeah, exactly. I'm 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 in for her. I, I, I've seen her in action already, I think, and uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, I would also was... like. I mean, if you like, if you if you're playing like Brother X or whatever, who like does two damage when he dies, unless you're like Tommy or something, I mean, you probably get to do two two damage more with Neftis than with than with Brother X, right? Because he definitely only does it once. Yeah, so, but, I mean, Brother X is like a one XP, five cost card, though. This is yeah, cool. more expensive, less XP, and he soaks stuff. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, 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 I think if you're doing bless, just like all the other ones, this is really really strong and helps you out a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird one, but it could be it could be really good. I think it's it will be interesting to try it out. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't we move on to the secret cards? Hey, so we got the Stygian Eye. Uh, it is a seeker event, level three, cost ten. Um, three, <laughs> three, three willpower uh, icons on it. It's an insight and cursed, uh, fast play only during your turn. Reduce the cost of play, uh, the Stygian Eye by one for each curse token in the chaos bag until the end of the round. You get plus three to each of your skills. Hmm. Not great. Seems, yeah, yeah, seems not <laughs> even it. It would be fun to. So, which Innsmouth scenario is it? It's the boat one. Isn't there a card in the encounter deck where you like mill a card from your deck, and then whatever the cost of it is, that's the difficulty of the will test that you have to do, or something? <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely a treachery somewhere. I don't remember where, but Stygian. Uh, uh, yeah, this seems. This, like it, it's not worth the xp it's not worth the money even if you were playing this for free it's like most of the time it's not better than uh mind over matter probably or it's it's it, it's basically like a mind over matter and like a card that makes your intellect better but yeah, there's other cards that do that better right mm, yeah best case scenario for this card is probably using like uh like events and things that add one of your stats to another stat um or <laughs> A full cursed uh, circle undone run because you've got those Brazier tests that you need to do, and this boosts all of them. So it would be like a plus twelve on that last one or whatever. But <laughs> but you have to be doing a lot of weird weird stuff. That yeah. said, there are some things that can play things from the from the discard pile. Right? There's um, insights specifically. There's a book that can do it, and then there's another event which. I'm blanking on the name. I don't remember if you have to pay the cost the, for them. It's the one that copies the one from discard pile. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the, memory, I think? the the reason this is kind of not as good as as you might think it is. It's sort of the same thing as like with Dark Horse. If if you see something that says plus one to all of your skills, most of the time that means like plus one to one of your skills because you usually don't need to use all of your skills. And in the same yeah. way, you're usually not going to need to use all of your skills. And the fact that you can only play this during your turn and it goes away at the end of the round means you're not even going to have it active during mythos phase. So it's yeah. not even like, Oh, I'll use it during my turn to boost my, my intellect. And then I'll also get to do a treachery with like agility or will you won't get to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it's only three seeker. It means we can't, it doesn't even splash into other people that can get like a bunch right. of extra actions. Um, to right. Right. Use it more. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that, that, if you're playing this for like two to zero, that means you have eight to ten curse tokens in the bag, which might just completely negate the plus three that you're getting to any one of your chests anyway, right? Like, come on. Yeah. I, I really, I really think this is just a don't ever play it unless the, until they print some other card that interacts with it in a broken mind I, or something. I guess Chad, Chad, uh, Iron Bro over here in chat saying Joe, Joe could play it for eight. Yeah, but that still means you need a bunch of curse tokens to make it cheap. Yeah, if you're gonna use it in Joe, it goes in the insight deck. Yeah. 
But if, if you're gonna play it anywhere, probably play it there. The thing is, like, yeah. do you do you need that plus three? The damn is saying like the use case for this, I think, is limited. It's like when you need to test your bad skill, basically, uh, during yeah. your turn. Um, and I feel like this is like a. I just this feels like this other even just like even just a skill card like uh, um, inquiring mind or whatever does the same thing for the one test. The, the nicest thing I can say about this is that if you manage to play it basically for free, it's sort of like having something that can either be a mind over matter or like a card with a bunch of book symbols on it that lasts for your whole turn. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, that's not terrible if you think about it that way, but if you, once you start having to pay like four or five for it, it just becomes completely unusable. Yeah. I was trying to think there, there are some cards that let you yoink uh, the curse tokens out. Um, so like you could play this and then play something that takes out the curse tokens. Um, yeah, like Tides of Fate. So I mentioned in chat, I think that's you. Mm -hmm. That's the the mystic one that I think you get money. If you take out curse tokens, you get money, right? Um, so like you could maybe use this as like a weird tech card for like because there's some there's some scenarios where you have to like one person has to do like three or four different tests to trigger an ability. Like there's in like a uh, search for Gadoth, there's that one location you got to do like three tests. And there's one in uh oh yeah it's a yacht or whatever so maybe you could use it as a tech card for that um i just feel like as a general card i don't know i don't think it's super strong so yeah i, I think just draw a bunch of cards and then commit a different card to each of those tests and you're you're probably fine yeah, you're, you're um, a seeker so you probably can't just draw cards so this <laughs> right. feels like one of those cards that would be like part of a combo or something like that so yeah. i'm kind of surprised that it doesn't remove itself from the game which i guess is an upside to it but also like maybe that'll happen maybe yeah, somebody I mean, will have like this thing where they just keep playing this every like for one turn and they get like plus 12 12 dollars yeah we'll, we'll we'll wait until they print a card <laughs> that's like gain gain x resources where x is the sum of all of your stats or something and there's some ridiculous like whatever sure, but sure. Un until then though let's uh, let's move on to the next card yeah let's do that we do do we want to talk about the art on this card though nope <laughs> No, <laughs> I was excited that it had the yellow sign in it, and this is not it's a thing that has the yellow sign in it. It's kind of weird and gross, and I don't really know what's going on. So it's, it's people holding a giant eye. I don't know. Anyway, next card. Gross. Yeah, the next card. So Dane, Dane looked up how to pronounce this, and he says sure that it's Gesh. Okay, fine. So we <laughs> we we have a we have a rogue card called Gesh. It's an asset. It costs two, and it's level two. It's a pact. It's exceptional, so that means it actually costs four XP, and you can only have one of them. And it says you get plus one will, plus one intellect, plus one combat, and plus one agility. Huh? What were we just saying about this? Um, <laughs> and then forced after Gesh enters play, make a promise using the following formula: I shall not draw slash play slash commit any cards during each of my turns. If you break this promise while Gesh is in play, discard it and add ten curse tokens to the chaos bag. <laughs> Well, Guys, we were just talking about how you add 10 curse so, tokens to the Yes, this is a great way go. to fill the chaos token with 10, 10 curse tokens. Um, that, that is probably the main use case for this, is uh, if you're trying to do weird you know curse what? stuff. It, it, uh, yeah. That's true, so, yeah. It's worth mentioning that unlike a lot of things that add curse tokens, like Promise of Power, it doesn't say, you know, if there's already 10 curse tokens and something else horrible happens or you can't yeah. do it. Just, that is like it, if you already have nine curse tokens in the bag or ten, you would just add one or zero, and nothing nothing bad would happen. So like this is like a new like build around card. Like if you can have some deck where you don't draw cards during your turn, or don't commit cards during your turn, it'd be insane. If you don't play cards deck. if you don't play cards during your turn, that's not insane. But hmm. uh, well, I mean, sometimes I, as a guardian, you're just you've got your stuff out, and you don't really need to play anything, and you're just it's like Murder Town. So it's kind of okay. Playing, playing cards includes playing events, though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the issue. But like, I mean, during, like, during your turn, though, like you could have a deck where you have events that are like reactive, you know, monster phase, like dodges and monster phase or whatever. Or yeah, like, sorry, yeah, with those phase. So yeah, I feel like I would rather play things like dynamite and stuff that I would rather play those cards and have plus one all of my stats. I mean, you it's know, a, it's in Rogue, so if, if you have a setup where, Dane's right, if you have a setup where maybe you don't have very many events that are during your turn, and you have a couple assets and you get those out and you keep them protected, then you can say play. Or you could do a deck where you don't have very many skills, um, or you don't, or, yeah. or rather you don't need skill, you don't need to commit to yourself skills for some reason. Um, See, if you're doing a support deck, I don't know. But yeah, as we talked about before, getting plus one all your stats 
seems good, but uh, yeah, you're probably not using all four of your stats most of the time. You probably use it's it's two. especially it's like so. What stat are you? What stats do you most want to boost? If it's like will, this is like you know you could play a holy rosary and it's like about as good as this. If it's you know intellect, you could play magnifying glass. Like getting plus one to each stat is just not that awesome. Um, it's also I don't know how much of a build around you can really make with it when you only get to have one copy of it in your deck. What if it's near the bottom? Now you have a bunch of cards that are specifically supposed to go with this and you're not going to have it until late in the game. Um, mm-hmm. But I do, I, I mean, I, I agree with what Ben and Dane were saying, which is giving up either drawing or committing during your turn seems very, very bad unless you have a draw engine that's like totally not on your turn somehow. Um, so I, I would not want to give up either of those things. Maybe you could build a deck where you could give up playing cards at some point, but I would not want to, like, don't give up committing cards. That's too important. Oh, no. Wait a second. Who? Someone can definitely play this and Dark Horse, right? <laughs> oh yeah, Preston and, uh, Preston. and Wendy. L- Lola could play it too. Um, someone, yeah, someone in chat did mention Lola, and I am. I was thinking. So if this this is like blanked when Lola has, uh, or no, it's not. It's not that it gets blanked. It's that it's like uh, discarded, right? I was wondering if you could like, oh, I'm not in green mode, so it's blank, so I don't have to follow the restriction or something. Uh, yeah, if you're not in green mode, there it's blank except for static boosts, right? Is that how Lola works? I don't remember. No, she can't. She can't trigger stuff, but I think forced effects are still triggered. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Never, never mind. Yeah, like so, the the best you could do is Dexter because he's got Molly, and you could name Pact with Molly, and then find this like in your deck. <laughs> That's the only thing that I think you can do right now that will find this like. If you have no other packs in your deck, hundred percent of the time, right? Actually, I might be wrong. So far, Dexter is the only one who can do that. Um, or you could you could have your seeker play upgraded uh, no stone on you or something. Sure, sure. yeah, yeah. But yeah. also, like, <laughs> but also, no, <laughs> don't do that. I yeah, I, I mean, this is a really interesting card. It's a it's very it's very creative and has a lot of flavor to it. I think that it. If, if it has a use, it's going to be through some kind of nonsense where you're trying to put 10 curse tokens in the back for some weird combo, or oh, it's just like a fun, fl- or it's just like a fun flavor thing where you really like the idea of it. And you want to play it. But if you're just trying to make a good deck, I would, I would not rely on this. Yeah, no, no chat, chat hopping on the translated grimoire immediately. That's, this is how you do it. <laughs> that, that is true. Yeah, that, <laughs> I mean, grimoire, somebody gets grimoire, you get Gesh down and then you're like, I mean, Dark this Earth. is this is four XP, so it's like, do you really want to put four, spend four XP <laughs> just to unlock that a little, a little earlier? I don't know. I don't know. So uh, I think I was actually wrong about. I think Lola. It's a, Lola's ability is you cannot only play, commit, or trigger abilities on neutral cards or cards of your roll. This is a forced ability. Like forced effects are forced abilities, so it might not trigger if you switch out of green and Lola. So it might might be oh, there, it's pretty solid. There you go. Great, great Lola card. <laughs> Although actually, maybe no, no, I'm wrong because I'm wrong again. Because you, you when you enter this play, you make the promise, and that creates a lasting effect, which is mm. if you break the promise, just like the the rule okay. campaign log that's like, uh, you know, if you say a certain word, something bad happens. Uh, that's like a constant effect type of thing. So, sure. Um, okay. Lola can't dodge this. She can still play it though. She really wants to. All right. I mean, I like the art. I like the. I I would. I would be interested in more of these to see more of this kind of concept because this is something completely new, right? Not the dark horse bit, like the the one to all stats, but the packed part. Yeah, the packed cool. Like, it's definitely cool. I like that. You know, I like I like cards that are you know, make you maybe think about your deck differently. It's mm. Just you know, then a day it's like, does it make? Is it? Can you do a weird thing to make your deck better than what you could have done without it? That's the question I think we usually try to answer. So. Someone, uh, someone in chat did mention that um, it's a Leo and Dexter card. Um, and I, I don't know necessarily about all of those, but Dexter, it is true that Dexter, if he was about to have to do something that he said he wouldn't do, he can quickly replace this with something. So he doesn't right. actually, <laughs> that is true. Okay. I mean, the, the thing is, the thing is like the 10 curses is not really like the reason that we're scared that we don't want to play this card. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm not as worried about that. It's just, it feels like when you play it, you want, if you're playing this card, you want to keep it down for a while. I think yeah, just, think. just just unless you're Lola, just like play play cards that do more than this card does is is my my recommendation. You know, but he, uh, Larry is kind of an okay idea though, because you don't 
place when do you play the ally on larry is it before your turn begins it's it's when your turn begins it's like kind of at the beginning of your turn you have a like little triggered ability that you can no, throw down says, an ally after your turn begins sure so that means you wouldn't be able to play allies uh if you chose play but i guess he's suggesting play draw so or commit or whatever you're, you're giving up a lot of good events to play this you're giving up like money events you're giving up dynamite well, you're giving no, up... If, if you're if you choose not to draw and you're playing yeah, someone that yeah. doesn't have yeah. very good draw like like larry anderson yeah, maybe yeah. he can get a cigarette case can't he why does he have good draw yeah, yeah. in that case it's already it's already a bad deck anyway <laughs> so yeah. like... all, right. all right let's go uh, to the next, yeah, let's, next card let's move on Next card is Ikiok. Welcome back. I'm so I was so excited to see this card in this pack. Um, this is uh, Ikiok, the Council's Chosen. She's a unique ally, uh, three cost, uh, level three, uh, which is different. Um, I guess I guess I should mention that uh, this was a card, and then we can... card council card, and okay. we'll get to the differences in a sec. Yeah, um, this is a three cost, uh, three XP or level three asset. Uh, it commits for one will and one intellect. Uh, she's an ally and a sorcerer. Uh, she says you get plus one will and plus one uh, intellect. And then you get minus one will and minus one intellect for each weakness beneath Ikiak. Uh, well, how does that happen? This is how. Triggered ability, when an investigator at your location draws a basic basic weakness, exhaust Ikiak, cancel that weakness's effects, and place it face down beneath Ikiak. Its owner must draw it if Ikiak leaves play. Uh, it was designed by the council at the Arkham Knights 2018 event, and uh, she has two health, two sanity of her own, and she takes up the ally slot. So a little bit of a difference from the actual original one, which came out at Arkham Knights 2018. Um, I think the only thing that's different is that the original one had one more health, and the original one's ability said draws a non-signature weakness as opposed to a basic weakness. I don't know if that... It didn't have icons, and it was old too. So oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it's interesting so to compare. It's interesting to compare to see like what they thought was like too strong or too weak about a card when it was yeah, like, yeah. designed. But I'm sad she went up to level three because that closes her off to a lot of people. But maybe that was like kind of ridiculous at some points. I mean, I imagine that was the reason they made it up to level three. They decided they didn't yeah. want to be splashed around everybody. But uh, I mean, for the card itself, like as it is. Um, and plus one willpower is always great, Mystic, right? Um, the book, maybe, depending who you are. Um, but really, you're yeah, I mean, using this more as tech, I think, to cancel some basic weakness you don't want to deal with. For like, a I mean, normally, <laughs> normally, if you've got like a level two or three ish ally that costs like three, soaks two and two, and boosts two stats, that's like Peter Sylvester or like Lola Santiago territory, which are very, very good cards. Hmm. This is this is a little bit shakier because the the will and intellect combo is always weird because you usually don't need both of those, right? right? Like it's, I mean, you can use them, but it's not like being somebody that is going to use, you know, combat and getting like will and combat, which is like a nice, that, that's like a nice combo. This is kind of like, yeah, okay. But uh, I don't know. I mean... There's definitely weaknesses where I would just absolutely love to hide it under something and never draw it again if I'm cycling my deck like five times. Exactly, yeah. But, like, uh, yeah. like something like Doomed or uh, all those weird things that are like, you go insane. What's the other one? Um, but the, but, I mean, it also works yeah. like the thing that follows um, like the enemy weaknesses that get recurred. Oh, that's funny. Um, I think what I really want is for... What I want is when I play Mandy for someone in my group to have this card and to catch yeah. my weakness on it. That's what I really want. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Oh my god. Well, it won't work I mean, on Mandy's like... weakness, but whatever your basic weakness is, right? Whatever ba yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean if if I had like a bad basic weakness and like a deck that was gonna cycle it a million times, I would like really want somebody to take it for me. But yeah. Yeah. But I mean they're sacrificing then you're sacrificing an ally slot to cancel out. Exactly. It's times, like which... is it worth it? I mean, I don't yeah. know. You know. Uh, it's definitely an interesting card. Uh, is it canceling this effect? I was trying to figure out if like if you like used it on like the stubborn detective or something if it would still count as stubborn detective being in play. Uh, I can't remember the rules for attachments, but um... I was wondering what would happen if you got that card, Threads of Reality, from uh, that one encounter set from um, the Dream Eaters on this, which effectively blanks it. Where do the things underneath it go? <laughs> let's not let's not go there. Uh, I mean, they'd still. 
That's interesting. Does that mean you could somehow kill her while it was blanked? And and we wouldn't have to draw the cards. Probably if you could find a way to blank her, that'd be pretty cool. And then and then like, you know, slip her away. But it just says if as long as she leaves play. So it's not like Dexter could bounce her back, or it's not like you could yeah. you could circumvent it uh, any specific. Yeah, I guess I guess that's a lasting effect too, right? Because it's canceled its effect and its owner must draw it if she leaves play. That's not like right. forced it's not like forced to draw everything underneath it or whatever. Wait. What about what about Diana? <laughs> What does Diana do to this? Uh, Once it cancels the weakness's effect, do you? I guess you'd finish resolving this, and then you'd just ha- you cancel it, and then you could tuck it, right? But then in, I think she, I think stuff that's under Diana has left play. I keep forgetting. I get this mixed up every time I think about it. Uh, <laughs> stuff's in play or not? Draw, to draw a card and gain a resource, which is super yeah. good. <laughs> worth it. Look, yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like you would, you would either be playing this because you want the will and the intellect or you would play this because you want to negate a weakness but you 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 would want to have a pretty strong desire to do one of those two things i think yeah 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 i mean the boosts are great i think the boosts are the boosts are fine it's the i think it's the cheapest card that gives these two weaknesses in mystic right or these two um boosts in mystic right now right uh the other one would be like uh, Key of St. Hubert or St. Hubert. It's a lot of cards. It's hard to keep track of them all mentally at yeah. this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Again, I don't know. Yeah, you could you could use this in um, like Luke or something, um, who's maybe trying to use his will in his book sometimes, or Marie. Yeah, Marie. It's just it's always for those I always struggle with those. It's like yeah, usually I'm trying to use my willpower most of the time, but you can yeah you can definitely do stuff where you like go half and half of it. If Luke, yeah, if you're playing Luke and you have like a really horrendous mm-hmm. weakness, or or if you have like Luke and you're playing like Mr. Rook and this or something, like you could you could find scenarios where it would be okay. But yeah. Oh, I mainly think I know. interesting. I, I'm 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 glad this is finally out just because these these beta cards, I don't know if they actually sell, but you see them up on eBay for like massive amounts of money. So it's don't nice worry. that don't people... worry, they're still up on eBay for massive amounts of money, even once they come out, people will still yeah. buy them. But now it's like people don't need them just to play with the card, you know. Yeah. I mean, not that not that we're doing a whole lot of playing with actual cards these days. Anyway. Liberation. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. We move on to the next one. Sounds good. Yes. So the next card is a mystic card, um, flute of the outer gods. It's a unique. It's a cost X asset that is level four. It has a willpower, combat, and agility icon on it. It's an item, instrument, relic, and cursed. Um, exceptional seal up to X cursed, uh, action exhaust flute of the outer gods to release one curse token sealed on it. Choose a non-elite enemy at your location. You can move the chosen enemy to a connecting location or deal its damage to an enemy at its location. This does not broke action. does not broke tax opportunity. Hmm. So it's eight XP, right? Cause it's exceptional. Yeah. Is this the that first instrument in the game? Bunkers. Yeah, well, it takes up a hand slot, too. I forgot to mention that. It does. Um, well, I mean, key of these is, is exceptional now, but that's like errata, right? Yeah. Or taboo or something. Uh, I mean, isn't isn't like double-double for experience or something? Or one of the rogue? Um, there's, there's definitely rogue yeah, ones that cost four and are exceptional. No, yeah. I was saying, is this the first instrument in the game? Oh, if yeah. so, Jim takes this every time I mean, for flavor. I mean, it's the first <laughs> instrument that is not a signature card right that's true that's true yeah jim has his yeah. trumpet like and he can have a trumpet and, and um violin oh yeah she can't take this though but um that's an interesting card it's a powerful Chad, Chad is definitely like a minute or two behind us by the way but it's fine um so damn it yeah I, I don't know. so this is something to do with you can do something with curse tokens with this Moving the non elite enemy is um, is interesting. That the effect main, can be pretty powerful. The main use case I think for that is <laughs> pit vipers in it uh, for guiding <laughs> to, to make sure. them out of an inconvenient location so you don't have to kill them or bathe them a bunch. That's, that's um, good, but dealing dealing the damage to stuff can be really good. There's there's yeah, some enemies yeah. that can kill themselves. I guess I guess the problem is that right. it's only damage. So if you have enemies that deal a lot of horror, then it doesn't really work very well. 
Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's still more campaign specific. But there, I mean, there's definitely campaigns where enemies lean more damage than horror. And yeah. Then, like, like the deep. Very funnily, you could use like the deep one bull to kill one of the. Or the other deep ones. ones no. and he'll, get, he'll get mad about it and run somewhere, but he'll be in the same place. So. Um, oh but, no, that's horrible. I mean, this is also a nice. It, it's a you know, it's Tesla's damage if you have the if you have multiple enemies at your location. Um. You could use not only enemies to like fight the big boss or something like if you're doing um the spider boss at the end of dream meters or whatever you could uh, use oh, the other God. spiders to have them attack the legs or the, or the boss which would be funny um, yeah there are some aloof enemies that are kind of annoying that this would this would help with there's a lot yeah. of other ways to use them but it's this just kind like of... there's situations where it'd be fun to use this it's just it's a hard ramp up right because yeah you want to get a bunch yeah. of chart. you probably want to get a bunch of seals on it. It does seal the curse tokens, which prevents your rogue from playing Faustian Bargain, which is funny. Um, <laughs> but well, and, and it's just also, I mean, eight XP is so much. Like you, you're gonna have a lot of other stuff that you want to spend XP on before this. But maybe mm -hmm. you get to like the last thing of the campaign, there's a lot of fighting, you're you're going into like uh I don't know, Dim Carcosa or something. And it's, well, I have all this XP. I don't really know what else to spend it on. I'm going to give this a try. It might be fun, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely an end game card. Um, I mean, I guess to propose, I think everything does lots of horror and not so much damage. Yeah, but that might have been you, the worst yeah. of, the, of the final ones. Yeah, sure. You're in the right. age, you're like 75 XP, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's also, thing. if you want to steal a bunch of curses, it's also very expensive to play this, too. That's what I was about to say, because I was like, oh, man, Dexter can use this with Gesh use gesh put 10 in the bag and immediately get this out and then i realized the cost is equ equivalent to the number of curse tokens you sell uh, why yeah, but, but then it dexter comes has, 10 to play dexter is a pretty worth? dexter's a pretty rich mystic because he could mr david renfield I mean, yeah no, um, why are you and, paying 10 for this i i definitely feel like this did not need to cost x this could cost like two and it would not be in any danger of being like an overpowered card that went straight over my head until just now that's horrible i mean yeah so like Dex, Dexter, I think would be a good candidate for this just because uh, he's, he can play stuff cheaper and he usually in that because of that he's also rolling the money. So like in the Dexter deck I'm playing through Insmith, he always has like oh way too much money by the end of every every round. So this could be a fun thing to play. Ursula uh, can take this and pull it out with Ellie, right? But it doesn't do anything if she pulls it out. Uh yeah, because it wouldn't steal anything. So, right. So it's just a flute hanging out. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> Unless, unless you can get, unless there's some cards that like move sealed curse tokens around or something, but I don't think there's sure. anything like that. Okay. Um, All right. Oh, I forgot about Gloria when we talked about the last card. She she exists. I haven't played Gloria yet. I should play Gloria. Um, yeah, I, keep, I keep forgetting she exists too, but <laughs> she's so incredible. I, <laughs> yeah, I, haven't, I just haven't had, I keep forgetting when I start a new campaign, and I forget to, like going to try her out. But sorry, I started a new campaign and I'm playing Amanda now for the first time, and that's great. We've, uh, anyway. we've, we've, you know, we've still got a lot of cards. We should probably move on unless someone else has something cool we to sure say about do. this. Um, all right. Uh, survivor card. Uh, this is uh, a watchful. What? It, I think oh, it's your turn back to read. To... I'm sorry. I got excited about the shirt. You can talk about it, Dan. Go ahead. Who isn't excited about this card? <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, Watchful Peace, which is a survivor event, uh, cost one, level three, two willpower icons. The art is like uh, anime Silas, like a uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy cutscene Silas, I would say, like uh, oh, yeah. late late '90s, like Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII Silas, basically. This is like romance um, novel cover Silas. Yeah, it is just like and blessed, and it says, as an additional cost to play a watchful piece, uh, search the chaos bag and/or cards in play for a total of five blessed tokens and return them to the token pool. Fast play when the draw and counter card step of the mythos phase would begin. Skip this step of the mythos phase. Wow. So uh, that's really, I, that's the first thing I said was, wait, this doesn't remove itself from the game? <laughs> yeah, I was I, I was expecting this to at least exile <laughs> itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this uh uh if you have any type of decent recursion, which survivors have pretty good access to, uh, and some type of less just regeneration, which again, bless there's <laughs> Survivors so easy access to. If you wanted to, you could easily make a degenerate deck that plays this every turn, and you just never draw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Um, like Wendy cards. can play this with her amulet out, like again, like a second yeah. time even. Like that's 
also another way to do know. it. But uh, I think it's going to get added to remove from games so you can't do a degenerate recursion. So I'd like to talk about it without uh, any recursion. What, what do we think of this? I think it's still pretty solid. Um, yeah. This is I, like... I, I think it's cool. I, I don't think it's like game breaking. I mean, it's the same thing as... um. So when we compare like... So Ward of Protection is like the ultimate card that we always say is really good right yeah and w when you compare that to things like uh, on the hunt or there's other cards that are like before you draw a card you get to not draw it right right and those are those can be all right but skipping an encounter card before you know what it is is not always all that amazing because it might just be a card that you don't care about um skipping a card like once you know what it is is more powerful kind of right, right. relative to costs I mean, this doesn't really skip it though. It also just delays you drawing it till the next round or whatever. Um, yeah, that's that's true too. But I mean, which can help though. In that some still can be like if you, if you've had a bad round, you know, and you don't want to have more stuff dumped on you. Yeah, it um, could give you some breathing room for sure. It gives you breathing room. It uses the blessed tokens that don't do anything if they're <laughs> just in the bag, um, and it costs only one, so it's not like and it's fast. Yeah, and even like three XP is not that much, right? Like you can. Yeah. You know, you're a survivor, you can eventually have three XP. It also commits for two will, which, you know, maybe if you're um if you're playing like Patrice or somebody, you know, maybe yeah, you can exactly. uh, actually is is this pretty good for Pat well, I guess it's not great for Patrice because you'd you'd like draw it during upkeep and then you'd use this and you'd have like one you have to, yeah. you have, you have to play it immediately for Pat as Patrice. Yeah. But... I mean, it's um, fine, though. There's a lot of circumstances where, I mean, especially, I think, in four-player. Four-player, you draw through the encounter deck at least three times, right? Like, during the yeah. game. And sometimes that's just really bad because you've got Ancient Evils in there. Delaying right. that probably mathematically helps you, like, even just for one phase, right? Like, helps you it's some, it's some aspect. Yeah, because four-player can be very spiky because if you're going through the encounter deck, you know, two and, two and, and, a, and a half times in the course of the game, it really matters whether you hit the three ancient evils on that last half right. time right yeah like that might make a huge difference to whether you're able to finish or not so yeah i mean I, the reason i think this is strong is it's very easy to get blessed tokens in the bag as survivor you only need a couple cards there's that one asset that like you take a damage and a ward about two two blessed in the bag and if you're a survivor you have jessica and peter so you don't care there's the card that dan hates that you pay two and it puts four in there and it's like i i think i'm pretty sure is i don't want to play those cards just to turn on this card like i want to yeah. if i'm if I play this card i want to get the bus tokens for free yeah i mean the sad part is sister mary can't play it the happy part <laughs> is mateo can play father it. Mateo can play it. <laughs> exactly yeah so if, if you have like a weird father mateo sister mary build father mateo can take this and and you know all is well you can do weird bless things with the chaos bag forever <laughs> yeah i really think Silas is supposed to be crustier and angrier and soggier than this. No. I, I don't no. like it's, it's the art is nice, but it really just feels off model for Silas. It, it is like a, it's a, a different version of sexy for Silas. He's got the shirt on. And he's got. He's, but this really he's reminds me of this, this is like young like, Silas, I think. Right, this is before he had to rip off a shirt to fight a bunch of uh, fish people, or for whatever, sure, right? and, yeah, and possibly it. maybe become a fish person. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> me of is like reading like game pro magazine in the like middle school library and like kids would send in art or whatever and like some some girl would send in art of like mario drawn as like a hot anime guy and it's like okay that's fine like i'm not judging that or anything but it's weird it's unsettling because mario well, that's, is supposed that's to the fanfic world right like, like this is like a short hairy little italian guy you know <laughs> this is silas fanfic yeah and it's great a lot, people, a lot of people, a lot of people are loving this. There, there's room in the universe of this game for different interpretations about this stuff. I yeah. think that I will play this card as probably more as a late game thing, like a scenario seven or eight, when there's like the the stakes are higher and you know that there's going to be those circumstances, especially in four or three player, where you know that you're going to be going through the encounter deck a lot. Yeah. If, if you know that there's going to be like ancient evils, you know there's going to be even just like in TCU in general, right? Because the the uh, the counter deck mills itself and does really bad things. Uh, the more things that are milled, this could be a good way to like mitigate even that effect from happening, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I'll because I'm playing Silas through our uh, in your Innisfith run, right? Oh I'm yeah, gonna, I already have some several dumb blessed things in there that ever makes fun of me. I was just thinking, who who can draw enough cards <laughs> to find both of 
these like reliably and constantly and yeah it's, it's silas <laughs> yeah and you know I, th- I think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be fun to to you'll probably end up recurring every time in silas and then i'll be like yep this is dumb um and yeah. then i'll have to use the let's game, uh but... let's let, let's let's move on though to the next one or All next right. so uh Dan, you want to read this? Do you want to just read the so that we we have the level four core tones? Yeah. You just want to read the hyper awareness and then summarize the, yeah. the other two. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so these are the three uh, core talent upgrades. Um, we we already have two of them, uh, the the purple one and the blue one, uh, but now we have the other three. So this is hyper awareness, hard knocks, dig deep. They all cost two resources to play. They're all level four, and they all give two uh, symbols, commit symbols for their respective. Um, whatever they're boosting, I guess, their yeah. uh, respective attributes. So for hyper-awareness, uh, it's two intellect and two agility icons to commit. Not bad. Uh, it's a talent and then uses uses two resources. Uh, replenish these resources at the, fo- at the start of your each round. And then as an action, you can spend one resource from your resource pool or from hyper-awareness to get uh, plus one intellect or plus one agility for the skill test. Same thing across the board. So hard knocks, same for combat and agility, and dig deep, same for will and agility. Um, so these kind of these went through a cycle, <laughs> and now now we're now it is complete. So we have the original level zeros, um, which cost two, and they were just kind of fast actions to boost for one money. Um, and then we went to level two, which was they went down to costing zero, and they gave two of each of their attributes. Uh, their respective attributes, and then they did the same exact thing the level zero version did. Now they give that the huge thing here, I think, is that they give the two resources to you every single turn. So that's like that's pretty value, and you could probably build around it kind of instead of incorporating a lot of skill cards in your deck or something like that. Like if you wanted to go hard on talents, you you could just get two hyper awareness, hard knocks, whatever down, and then just kind of be set for turns because you're going to have like four resources that you can just dump into whatever skill you need to do oh no these are for dark horse decks aren't they <laughs> it's recurring it's, money you can use that skill it's, it's oh, no, you're if, right if you're, if you're a former netrunner player and you're recurring credit tokens or just sitting around collecting dust hey. it's an opportunity to use that's those, the real yeah. use you can bring it over, over you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah so we saw the blue and purple one in the Investigator Star decks. Uh, so I think this is just kind of completing the cycle. Um, yeah, if, I, you, if you don't have another way to boost those skills every turn, they all boost agility, which is weird. But uh, if, you don't have, if you don't have a way to boost those skills every turn, you need something. Uh, these, these are these are right. I don't know. I, I think what's a little bit of a bummer is just based on the colors that these are and the fact that they're level four and the specific combinations of skills that they boost. I'm not sure how many decks are really going to want them. Um, like hyper awareness, for example, what what seeker would not just want higher education instead? Is like kind of what I'm wondering. Yeah. But yeah. Maybe, maybe is, is there? Do we have an investigator that can get talents yet? I feel like we'll get one eventually, maybe. But uh... that would be interesting. like hard knocks. You know, certain Preston decks might want it, so that's maybe we're thinking about. Maybe, Dig- maybe Tony. Yeah. Um, dig deep, yeah. like when Wendy could play it, but Wendy kind of just has her own ability to pass. It, maybe I mean, it might, it might not be her, her will and her agility with like Peter and like track shoot yeah. already just like off but, the charts. So. But but I I do like the design of these. Like these are I I, I think these would be fun because it would be like another thing that you can kind of use every turn and like make smart decisions about when to use it. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is more fun when you have that recurring resource because um, it has that strategy there. It's very funny to me that Dig Deep is a level four survivor card after they waited, you know, like four years or after <laughs> five years uh, to print them in Stella. And then now they're just like, eh, whatever, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is really funny. Yeah. Now, I like these cards very much because they kind of open space for decks like the the um, the Guardian one, uh, Physical Training, level four one came out in the Nathaniel Cho pack. And I think it's a great option for uh, for people who don't want to take like have their decks take up a lot of space or, or have uh, skills take up a lot of space in their decks because effectively it's kind of like I mean you could just run vicious blows just run like level two overpowers or whatever and then have these 
and have them be like a really good output, especially if you're like Sister Mary or if you're Roland or somebody who doesn't really have like a lot, like a ton of combat, like right straight out the gate, like Mark or Nathaniel himself, you could definitely consider running these. Um, but I would say probably to run them as like a pair and to have them be kind of more of a core part of how your gameplay is, is rolling out. I mean, they're also nice because I mean, they're not unique or anything, so you could eventually have them both down. Yeah. And basically, have exactly. four resources you can use each turn to boost you know, those two stats. Yeah, um, I think the other ones are a little bit better because will is always kind of a relevant stat. I guess agility you could argue is too, but I, I think that in terms of like defensive stats, will is always the one that like you kind of want more. But I don't know. I, I mean, agility is obviously good for evading. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, in lower player counts, it might be helpful. I guess would this be stronger? This would this be stronger than skill cards in like hard or expert difficulty when the chaos bag gets kind of crazy? Um, where you're trying to minimize your tests, so you probably want to you pump that two money like each round to whatever your one important test the round is. Or... The I mean, issue I, is that they both cost four experience if you're getting. Two. I, I don't think it's inherently better or worse. It's all about you know, do you have enough money to spend on this versus do you have good enough yeah. skill cards? Like it's. Yeah. It's it's just it's just a thing in your toolbox. It's a thing that can help you pass tests, but there's other cards that also do that. So it's dependent on what you're trying to do. Yeah, right. I mean, to me, these cost effectively zero money because the two, you pay two, but the two money immediately goes on it. I guess if right. you don't use it in the round you play it, then I guess it is costing you money. But uh... yeah, I I think you're right. I had never thought of putting this in a dark horse deck, but I think that that's where they go. It's, it's definitely. It's definitely good for dark horse yeah having, yeah having a, not, i think i tried dark horse like three years ago uh so therefore uh, well, i'm an expert on it uh does it goes, goes the dark horse decks so but, okay so suppose you're playing dark horse fire axe preston do you do you need this or is fire axe enough i mean i think that sometimes you just you just want if you're going to swing three times yeah because and you only got four on your four on your uh, family inheritance and one in your pool. I mean, generally, right? Or or zero in your pool because you're dark horse. This way, you have six. I don't know. It's tough. And, and it, I mean, it gives you room to use that money and other stuff as well. Like if you're exactly, yeah. you want to play or whatever. Um. So I think it, I think it's extra that can help there. But yeah, I, I, no, I did play Dark Horse Plus, and whenever you first came out. Yeah, you did. I remember. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's also an alternative. <laughs> here, we, here we go with the jank, like we were just talking about not doing. Gesh and Dark Horse and Preston with hard knocks or whatever, like you you effectively don't need resources and you don't need to commit anything if you have these, right? Like yeah. you're, you're using the pump, the hard pumps from Mariner's Compass and Fire Axe and, and now you've got hard knocks or Dig Deep or whatever you're going to be using. The only issue is that it sucks that they don't boost your intellect. Because that's that's the other most relevant stat in the game. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a. Uh... Yeah. You mean the green one doesn't boost intellect, or the red one? Yeah, green or red, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess you can't take red anyway. Because there are dark horse builds, you can make dark horse min or whatever if you wanted to. You can sure. Sniper winners, sure. but I think people do. Um, there's there's some builds you can do with that. Anyway, I'm tired of talking about dark horse. I wish there was a couple other car weird janky cards other than dark horse we could talk about all the time. Uh, I was hoping. To get... <laughs> Ga yeah. uh, how do you say it? Gash? 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 I was hoping that would be a separate category from Dark Horse, but I'm already worried that it's just going to always I mean, look together. At least, with Dark Horse, at least with Dark Horse, you can put two copies of it in your deck and it doesn't cost XP. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's true, yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for right uh, the version. Then then we're talking, but you know, until see. then. What's the other start? The On Your Own was also like a potential interesting, like, oh, you could build it on not having allies and having events. Yeah. I don't yeah, see I don't, people I don't, talk about that one too much, though. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see a lot of that happening. <laughs> nope. So, um, but, all right. Let's go well, to the next one. Let's move on to the neutral <laughs> cards. Um, so we got Favor of the Moon. This is a level one neutral asset that costs one resource. It has a intellect and a combat icon on it. It's a pact and cursed. Uh, fast, seal up to three curse tokens. If there's no token sealed on Favor of the Moon, discard it. Reaction when you would trigger, or excuse me, when you would reveal a chaos token from the chaos bag, uh, exhaust favor of the moon, resolve a token sealed here instead, as if it were just revealed from the chaos bag, then gain one resource. So, 
This is a card. This is a card that lets guarantees curse draws when you need them to trigger whatever nonsense you use curse tokens for. Right. That's the whole purpose They're of this. They're finally here. Which there's not the stuff that the stuff that makes you want to draw curse tokens is those new mystic spells. Yeah. And what what else exactly? The um. There's... The coin and the um, what's the the one that came out alongside the coin? Uh, the, yeah, the, the, the two new accessories or whatever. Yeah. Well, no, it's a hand slot. Okay. Uh, I forget what it's called. So, somebody in chat can can help. But yeah, the yeah the pet the cursed penny or whatever the hell it is. Right, yeah. right, right. There's, yeah, there's definitely green cards and some, a couple secret cards that like have some effect that trigger when you draw a curse token. Yeah. Um, Not to mention the uh, the the covenants, right? Like I don't I don't remember what the covenants do, the covenants do, but yeah, like the covenants yeah. can make it so like you draw the curse token and then what is the green one that you draw the curse token and then don't draw again? No, and, that's the oh. And the orange one is the orange ones. You draw it, but you treat it as a plus one. The green that's one is you draw it and then you just kick it out of the bag and then you re basically like soft restart the test. Don't don't include the the. Oh, well, that's not. That's not as good for this then, because you're probably yeah. wanting to trigger the curse. Um, I mean, if you're trying to trigger the one where if you draw both tokens, then it's an automatic uh, success. You could try to draw a blessed token, and then once you draw the blessed token, I mean, it's still, you're basically going from very impossible to do that to just slightly less impossible. I mean, we should talk about the second one too, right? The the other one is is I mean, favor, one, of the yeah, blessed, favor of the right? sun. I, I feel like they don't yeah, We can do them separately. I think too well okay. together because the one's curse, one's blessed. So that's what I was focused yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this, I mean, does, uh, this does give you money as well, which is a nice little payoff. So it'll net you two money eventually. Um, there are some seeker cards but, that care about it too, like um, like uh, Fey, that skill card that returns to your hand if you've drawn a. a, a yeah, I, I thought of that one just because I was looking at it in Silas recently, but that that means you're just kind of canceling out the Fey effect mostly. So I don't, Unless I don't you're mad, in which case you can use the Fey the entire turn, and then on the last skill test you can throw it on the favor of the moon, or I just already have it out. But, but, it turn to your well, but but no, because you're using the Fey the entire turn, but it, the the icons from Fey are kind of canceling out with the curse token, though, right, or something like that. No, he's yeah. saying like use it the last whole turn, and then the last test you put a curse token, so you pull it out from under Amanda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is fast. It doesn't even cost like it doesn't even cost. It costs one money to get it out, yeah. and then the first time you pull a curse token from it, you gain a resource and it recovers, recoups the cost. Right? Yeah, I mean, it is like if you want to get curse tokens out of the bag, I'm not really sure if that's something you'd want to do, but this also does kind of do that cheaply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I kind I, of breezed past it. I I think this is key for the the mist the new mystic spells. Um, that yeah, with, curse tokens. Yes. With, yeah. with, Without this, I was kind of skeptical about those really being worth it. I mean, there, there was an interesting idea, but it was kind of like, I don't know if you could trigger them reliably enough. With this, uh, I mean, that really does make a huge difference, honestly. Yes, it does, um, certainly. Especially because they're not unique. Oh, no, oh, they are unique. Just kidding. Forget that I said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they are unique. So you can only play one of them. But, you know, you still but, play two because you'd yeah. use one up and then you'd play right. the other one. Yeah, I, yeah. I wish, I honestly wish that it didn't get discarded when the tokens are gone because it would be cool to use this in Dexter to trigger your good spells. And then once it's empty, turn it into David Renfield or something and then play another one. Yeah. Well, I'm not the end of the spectrum is Yorick who loves things that discard themselves when they're done. Yeah. And then they can, he can just kick them back from the, from the uh, graveyard or whatever. He might like the blessed one better because that, yeah, so I, I have a lot to say about the next one. Maybe not so much to say. About I, did, I didn't notice that it was unique. That is kind of a bummer because if you have multiple people on your team trying to do curse stuff, then oh, only yeah. one person can yeah. really use it. But that's that, yeah, that does kind of suck. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I if you have too many people care, who are caring about curse tokens, maybe there's too much. Maybe the bag always has ten in it, and you can't play your Faustian bargains anyway, or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's good for definitely good for the mystics. And I think there's some other secret cards that'll combo off too. Uh, one one last thing. I, one last thing I want to say. You do not. Oh no, sorry. You do exhaust it. Okay. Because yeah. I was thinking like, oh, well, maybe you could have multiple people have this in their decks, and you just like burn through it fast enough that everyone gets their turn. But no, yeah, mm -hmm. it's prob well, probably not great. There's that neutral card too. Um, that's like an event that you draw tokens from the bag until you find an elder sign or a uh or an auto fail or blessed or cursed and then depending on the one that you get you either heal two from an ally or you remember that one or you damage an enemy two 
that one you can use with this too. Yeah, because this doesn't say during a test. It's just when you reveal. It's 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 just. I feel like th this and the next card are just bread and butter for for like bless slash curse builds. Like these are the things that you want in your deck. Hey, it. The last thing I want to say about this, it is an interesting choice to put these in the second to last pack. That's right. I mean, yeah. I, I've, I've alluded to these every single episode we've yeah, done that we've talked about. These. <laughs> and well, okay, so, finally here. Uh, okay, so let's let's go on and talk about the next one then, right? Hey. So, yeah, this is this is my turn, I think. Yeah. Um, so we have Favor of the Sun, which is a unique neutral asset that costs two and level one uh, with a willpower icon and agility icon. It's a pact and blessed fast seal up to three blessed tokens. If there are no tokens sealed on it, discard it uh, reaction. When you would reveal a chaos token or the chaos bag, exhaust favor of the sun, resolve a token sealed here instead as if it were just revealed from the chaos bag. So it's pretty much the same as the previous one, only it costs two instead of one. And um, when you, when you, replace the when you instead of drawing a regular token you choose something from this fr from off of this card you don't get the money because you're you're getting like a good token instead of a bad right. token exactly yeah 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 so relevant right this but, this enables like if you're winchester mary or what it, it like immediately enables the winchester on, on three things which i know isn't like saying much but it's it's so good for a lot of things that need you to draw less tokens like yeah. like Ben was alluding to earlier, the red covenant is the one that when you draw a blessed token, you can just exhaust it and stop after the after you mm -hmm. draw the blessed token, which is basically an auto success, right? It, that's effectively what it is yeah. with bonus because then you also have the plus two value. Yeah, why is a uh, why, why sorry? Why is the Winchester? Why is this effect the Winchester? Yeah, the, because when you got it or tabooed to work with oh, any single okay. token, right? non-negative skill tokens, okay. yeah. yeah um uh, and you could you could get the you could get the purple covenant and play both of these and then have three <laughs> automatic successes you sure can uh yeah yeah that that then the then the purple covenant would actually trigger more than once a game so yeah. uh yeah, on tests you don't care about it triggering well the important part is it would trigger on care, tests you maybe care about uh, exactly yeah yeah tests. and you could that's an auto success so any test right like yeah anything like there's definitely so, so there's definitely like yeah if you're playing like blessed blade or other stuff that pays off drawing blessed tokens especially if it's things where it like does extra damage or gets extra clues or you would want to control when it happens mm -hmm. then this is really good so it's same as the previous one it's like to, to the extent that bless and curse stuff is ever going to be good these cards are an important part of making it work that way so it's a bummer that they're unique and it's a bummer that they came out in the second to last pack yeah, I, I am very confused why these were not early on. Maybe they wanted us to play without them and then realize, oh, these are the this is the power here. But um, it, it was more just frustration, being like, why can't I put these in my deck? Yet? You know, like yeah. <laughs> these are the things that make them work. Like, I'm so yeah. excited to finally play with plus and curse tokens and have these effects on command. Um, yeah. Like I was saying earlier, Yorick loves favorites. You can just every time he puts that in, super favorites on back. A lot of things like super precious. Um, have faith, what's it called? The philosophy of keep faith. Yeah, keep faith. Um, you can put that skill card that you want to see on a bus token, right? Yeah, yeah. You can put it in the air, yeah. It's really good. A lot of upside for, for him. For, you know, okay. I'm over here. I can't resist doing my standard post kill humble slammer and saying, <laughs> even with all this stuff, it's really, it's really not good to be playing a lot of cards, just making plus cards work the way that they're supposed to. You just play regular cards. I feel like, yeah, that's the only one I have. I think you want to go super hard for us unless you're doing like a weird kind of thing. Yeah. I feel like you want to, if you're going to do less stuff, you need to try to like 68. I, I feel like I, I don't want to cramp on this. It's like, this is, it's at least there's enough stuff going on now that it's at least good for people to give us a try and see how it works. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, I think it'll be good for Mary. You know, like, Colin's seeing Mary in our, our own. I'm feeling a lot of these applications. I'm not going to worry about the threads. And, like, yeah, as you said, they must have played. Um, you know, I still hold up hope for that super blessed weapon. Um, it's in the pack. It's not a very time I should even spoil it. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, there's nothing, it's a super big weapon. But, uh, 
Oh, that great for that. So it was, uh, so fun, which is like a photo of me. Yeah, no, it's better. It's like he did what he wanted to be second grade, so he talks to him. It's not me. Anyway, that's a future, future discussion. Uh, let's move on to the last my card. My parting thoughts about this. Do you guys remember like Kirby's Adventure? Great game. Great game. Great game. Great game. Great game. Really great game. One of the bosses is like the sun and moon and the moon she's blue. Oh, so yeah. She's yeah. actually the sun. She's like a shine at you. Card on this card is reminds me of it. It's one of my favorite games. It makes me very happy. That's all I have to say. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Praise the sun, right? Uh, sure. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, last card. Last card. Well, <laughs> here it is. One of the cards I helped design uh, Purifying Corruption. Um,. It costs four to play. It's level four asset. Uh, commits for one wild symbol. It is a ritual, blessed and cursed, and has triggered uh, ability. When you draw a non weakness treachery, take one damage and one horror, cancel that card's revelation effect, and place one resource on this card as corruption. If this card has three or more corruption, remove it from the game. Uh, fast action, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Either heal one damage and one horror, or remove one corruption from this card. Uh, and it was designed by the Impure, which I was actually a part of for Arkham Knights 2019. <laughs> and I had uh, crazy stories on our recap of, of the uh, Arkham Knights adventure last oh, yeah. two years the, ago the, now. The, the original, yeah, it was 2019. The, the original version of this card before MJ took it back to the shop to kind of uh, adjust it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, is, is this... the original version of this card... Uh, I think it was exactly the same. I didn't even put it on the, the side here. Version, oh, yeah, that, I think yeah. the version yeah. as released, the version that they like walked out of oh, the car oh, council yeah, yeah. and was, was crazy. Now. Yeah, yeah, um, and crazy. then and then it became the beta version, which is actually exactly the same. Right. Um, I think, yeah, I think they changed the wording on it slightly, but it, the effect is the same. So is uh, yes. are we are we caught up with card council cards now? Like, did Dendromorphosis come out? Did the we're, uh, did, we're yeah. missing Shrine of the oh, yeah, yeah. Mirai? Yeah, Mirai uh but we have we have thoughts we we have thoughts of when it's going to come out uh <laughs> okay due to, le- due to leaks um but <laughs> um <laughs> someday ffg will figure out how to not deliver a pack three months early to france or whatever <laughs> um, probably not <laughs> so so yeah so we did we did like already basically cover this you know a, a year or two ago or whatever but I, I i the bottom line is like i mean wording stuff is great if you don't care about taking damage and horror, or if you even want to take damage and horror, then this is a pretty good payoff for doing it. It is kind of, it is expensive. It's a lot of XP. It's a lot of money, you know? Yeah. This is, I mean, this is Calvin and Tommy, right? Love this card. Um, Yeah. Seems great to take, to take on command damage and horror. I mean, by the time Calvin would consider picking this up, he probably already has enough trauma that he doesn't want (laughs) to, actually just, take just more randomly damage cancel too quickly yeah, that's fair. but uh, so, you know survivors you know the cl- good si- the peter jessica combo and survivor means like that's basically not a cost most of the time yeah so. also spirit of humanity right the, the new the new mm. hots for uh for calvin you can just use this use spirit of humanity use this remove the corruption yeah. again and then you're you know you're, you're back to where you started the thing that always the, the thing that makes me kind of interested in this in terms of trying to break stuff is uh so sometimes there's no encounter deck like in uh, beyond the gates of sleep right yeah and i think there's i think it just says you can't play cards or whatever you can't do things that require you to draw like you can't play drawn to the flame or something yeah but basically anything that would interact with but there's also so sometimes there's situations where like luke is in his dream zone and if he draws an enemy it just like doesn't spawn there or something right. it just falls like off. <laughs> like you could imagine a weird scenario where like some particular location in some scenario if you're there like encounter cards just automatically get canceled and you could just spam this because it doesn't exhaust you could just like use it <laughs> you could heal up to full and then remove all the corruption that'd be kind of interesting oh it doesn't the second thing doesn't exhaust itself right it doesn't exhaust but it, it is a cost so like you do have to actually be able to draw the encounter card yeah but like, I'm, right if it cancels like with luke or something yeah, yeah. that's true yeah something yeah. something weird like that you know or like if there was if there's like an a, some kind of story item you get that's like oh as long as you have this card in play cancel all encounter cards that you draw or something it's like oh go crazy just yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the thing is is that uh if it has three more corruption so it's not like you can you can it's not like it comes in with like like you could stack tokens on it and just have a billion like and you know there's there's always a capacity for three yeah at a time. so the the reaction doesn't exhaust either right 
No. Me misreading that? No. So you, you could you could get into a state where like you're like, oh, I kinda wanna heal a little bit, but I'm worried about a couple of the encounter cards. What if I just draw one and if I don't like it I'll <laughs> cancel it? I mean the weird thing <laughs> is, do it is that again. this this is not unique. So like everybody could have this? Like like all four uh, people could have two copies of this, right? Yeah. Well, especially oh, that's why they changed the. Well, that's why they changed the wording. So, so yeah. the original wording, I think, said like if purifying corruption has corruption on it or something. So, and and definitely one of the people that might want to take horror or maybe not damage, but is Carolyn, right? If we right, get the yeah. <laughs> if we get the if we get the like doctor character whose name I forget at some point, maybe you have a four player group with like Carolyn and the doctor, who I assume will have like a similar ability to Carolyn. And then everybody is just warding stuff all the time and getting healed and getting money or whatever. <laughs> you can, but that's not playing Arkham Horror anymore, right? Yeah, it, it might, then it you're might just get not weird. drawing counter counter cards. You're just mitigating damage and horror. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's which is it's which is one. fine, I guess. It's, I don't know. Yeah, I do find it interesting that they didn't make any changes to this card. No, no, they did because you guys made a super ridiculous card. Never mind. They just didn't do it. <laughs> well, I was thinking like, oh, it's weird that uh, <laughs> so it's they. It's it's a fun exercise to see like oh they had to boost it because of this reason or to theorize about it but uh, we just know they changed this immediately because it was already too ridiculous so I yeah. guess I guess I should have kind of seen this coming in this set because like at the time MJ was like she was like oh man what if it's both blessed and cursed and then like <laughs> and then Insmith comes out and it's like everything is blessed and cursed. Yeah. No wonder, you know, no. This is where it should I mean, be. Yeah, with that at the time, they would have been. Would they have been working on Insta still at that point? I don't know. Or I, maybe, yes. maybe the final phases of it. I can't yeah. imagine that it's a uh, it's a uh, coincidence. Yeah, it, they, maybe, that they yeah, fit yeah. it into the back. Because it makes sense they put it in here because it has yeah. blessed and cursed on it. So did, did yeah. we ever? Did we ever get an answer on whether purifying corruption is a like noun phrase or like present tense <laughs> verb phrase? I remember wondering about that, and I, I don't think we ever really got a response. I, uh, yeah, the jury's I out. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's. It's you know, it's fun. The mystery. The, it's exciting to have a mystery and not know the answer to it. I mean, what mystery box? Yep. You're a fan of J.J. Abrams. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. God. Well, anyway. That's all the cards from uh, the Lair of Dagon. Um, I was so actually many. pretty hyped about this pack. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of cards here. There's a lot of things that kind of like tie a nice bow on builds and things like like the end the the top end of the the uh, talent upgrades and the favors are finally here, so I can finally rant about them for good reason. Um, a lot of good cards in this pack. A lot of strong cards. A lot of weird cards that that have effects that ha- like haven't been seen before like gesh and uh and the silas card the the sexy silas card um well is everybody else as hyped as this pack as i am i, I mean now that all the favors are here we can like finally talk start talking about these blessed and cursed builds uh we're gonna be talking all about them on our discord and i mean by by we i mean i <laughs> will be come hang out with us uh, let us know your thoughts reach out to us on facebook reddit uh, instagram wherever you guys listen to podcasts or email us at uh, comments at mur.fm and uh, everybody, thanks so much for all your support. Uh, consider donating to our Patreon. And thanks for listening. Be safe, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.